Let me tell you a story that stuck with me since my Sunday school days. It's about young Samuel, a kid who heard God's voice loud and clear. I used to wish I could hear God like that. I remember asking my Sunday school teacher, what does God sound like? How will I know it's God? And I still remember his pretty puzzled face. As I grew up, Samuel's story still amazes me. Imagine, if you will, being so young and brave, saying, speak, your servant is listening. But the message he got wasn't all warm or fuzzy. Watch, God's voice boomed through Samuel. Get ready, I'm about to shake things up in Israel. It wasn't a gentle whisper, but it was a warning about the tough times ahead for Eli's family. The Bible says Eli tried to warn his sons about their bad behavior, but if God is punishing him so harshly only just because of his sons' continuous wrongdoing that he couldn't control, well, it seems like a really tough judgment on Eli for being an imperfect parent, right? I mean, we all know how hard it is to raise kids well. We do our best to discipline them, to guide them towards what's right, but changing deep-seated bad bad behaviors and habits, that's a seriously tough job. So let's step back and look deeper. After getting God's anger against Eli's family, we are told that young Samuel was scared to tell Eli about the message. It was only when Eli insisted, saying, don't keep it from me, that Samuel finally got the courage to tell Eli what God had said in his words. But here's something to think about. Even though God was furious at Eli's family, God left it up to Samuel to decide whether to share that vision. No direct order to share it, but it was Samuel's decision. How tough it is to speak for God, right? Let's be real. Way too often in history and even now, people have used God's name to justify their prejudices, conflicts, and stuff that's totally against what God really stands for, which is love and peace. Whether it's in our personal lives or in the bigger picture of society or politics, we need to pause and make sure we are really speaking for God's heart and not just pushing our own biases, agendas, or limits onto God. Just as young Samuel wrestled with truly representing God's voice, Jesus faced similar challenges from religious leaders more focused on rules than mercy. Because strict Sabbath observance had become like the ultimate litmus test of one's faithfulness to God, they were always watching Jesus, waiting to jump on any little thing they thought broke the Sabbath rules. So there in the grain fields, Jesus' disciples were plucking and eating heads of grain, which the Pharisees thought counted as work and therefore unlawful based on their strict interpretations about the Sabbath. But rather than rebuking Jesus' followers, Jesus backed them up by mentioning how David, King David, chowed down on holy bread when he needed it. His, His commanders needed it. He was basically saying, human needs matter more than sticking to every rule or letter. Then later, Jesus really shook things up by healing a man's withered hand in the synagogue on the Sabbath. To the religious leaders, this represented a brazen breach of Sabbath protocol. But Jesus, again, flipped the script by challenging them with this penetrating question. Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save a life or to kill? He was shouting loud and clear, helping people, showing God's compassion. That's what really counts, not getting stuck in rigid rituals. 
And it also challenges all of us to think about the deeper reason behind our own religious practices. Jesus wasn't afraid to defy the status quo interpretations to represent God's true, true heart. Are we actually prioritizing love and caring for others? Or are we just going through the motions that we are completely missing and turning a blind eye to the oppressed and marginalized crying out? These stories of Samuel and Jesus today drive home an important point. God's rules were never meant as burdensome, heartless legalism, lacking compassion. Jesus challenged the Pharisees' strict rule-keeping. It lost sight of true mercy and healing. And we too must be careful. We cannot go get so caught up in religious rituals or practices that we miss the opportunities to show God, God's boundless love in action. Because that's exactly the trap Samuel fell into at first. He heard God's harsh words about Eli's family, Eli's family, and didn't even stop to consciously discern what really matched up with God's message of peace and mercy for people. We all risk the same mistake. Our desires for power can warp our interpretations. Our need for control can distort how we apply God's laws. Us versus them mentalities lead us astray from God's true heart. But what if Samuel had approached things very differently, maybe with compassion? What if he had focused not just on doom, but also on the chance for redemption? I mean, God's anger wasn't meant to be the final word, right? It was more like a push for change and restoration. Imagine if Eli's family had listened and turned back to God. Their story might have taken a whole new turn. The punishment didn't seem like a direct zap from God, but more like the consequences of their own actions, right? Eli's sons died in battle, and Eli himself passed away naturally due to old age and frailty. Doesn't that show that God was actually hoping for their return and giving them some time? Even after Eli and his son's tragic death, God didn't wipe out the whole family line. Phinehas' wife gave birth to Ichabod, and their family continued. So even though there was judgment, there was also a glimmer of hope in God's mercy shining through. This stands in stark contrast to the Pharisees Jesus encountered. They brushed off human suffering, believing that following strict laws was more important than helping those in need. Their attitudes was like, they're not dying today, so they can wait. But Jesus turned that mindset upside down. He showed that when it comes down to strict rules versus helping people, Acts of love, compassion, and mercy are always in line with what God wants. So the real deal is about spreading love, compassion, reconciliation, not picking sides and causing more division. We can't just harshly judge or throw around condemnation without a tone of humility about truly representing God's unconditional love for everyone. The Bible shows us that God's love goes way beyond our human ideas of justice or mercy. Think about it. God doesn't just see things through the lens of strict rules. God's perspective perfectly balances wisdom and mercy in a way we can barely comprehend at times. So our job as God's representatives is to strive for that same grace field merciful God's perspective. These examples reveal the timeless struggle of representing God's authentic heart today. And this struggle is just as real for us today as we navigate this cultural moment today. We feel like this course today has become so polarized and heated that hate speech seems so normal. 
Now more than any other time, we need that Christ-like humility and love to counteract all the arrogant self-righteousness out there. We need to think before we speak, not stir up more anger or violence. We need wisdom, God's wisdom, not just words, just fewer more division. Because our God does not operate with such detached indifference. God is intimately present and knows the profoundly painful our our lives, gut-wrenching losses, broken relationships, the sting of gossip, the injustice of discrimination and ignorance. In God's eyes, no one, no one is less important or deserving of any kinds of discrimination and suffering. God's heart just longs to bring healing, not heap on more burden, more pain. Remember, we are called to more than just represent our own ideas about God. Rather, we are here to live out God's heart for all people. But it's not some abstract idea, but it's about how God has touched our own lives so mercifully. So we need to stay humble and careful because we can't fully grasp the depths of God's love. We only get a glimpse of who God is. But as time goes by, we hear from each other and experience God. And now we see that our God is all about compassion, mercy, and healing, not harsh judgments. Judging, that's our God's job, right? Like Jesus, we are called to break down religious pretense and power games to truly do good and soothe suffering wherever we go. Isn't this tragic? God showed us how to love, but we have messed up with all this conflict and hate. When we are confused, we must return to Jesus' call, love one another as I have loved you. In those words, we find the courage to speak God's truth with hearts of grace. Ultimately, this is the core issue at stake. Are we truly walking in the spirit of God, God's love, or just outwardly following rules? When we think about God's um, representing God's true voice, it hits home most powerfully when we see it embodied in our people's, real people's lives and their stories. And we have all seen inspiring examples of this in our own lives, right? Just last week at two, two funeral services, I heard the stories of individuals whose lives exemplified humble and sacrificial love. These folks came from very different backgrounds, but they all shared one thing. Their lives showed love in action. They weren't perfect, just like the rest of us, but their lives were all about giving love which is what God's all about. It is not about putting on a show, but it is about real, deep love. St. Francis nailed it when he said, if we are too worried about fulfilling the letter of the law through our actions, we may fail to walk in the spirit of love. That is our challenge today, to truly listen to God's heart, and be willing to fully embrace what God is speaking in our time. To listen not just for what's comfortable and easy, but for what's true to God's heart. I know this may sound countercultural. It may not align with what you were taught or what you were told to believe, but today we all are called to follow God's way no matter what. Even when God says to show peace to those we dislike. Even when God says to show mercy to those we want to judge. Even when God blesses the ones we struggle to show mercy to. Even then, God wants more than just following rules. God wants to actively care for one another. In the messy reality of life, our lives. Even when it's tough, God wants to want us to live it out with faith, 
live out justice, mercy, compassion, compassionate love for everyone, not just the ones we think deserve it. This is the challenging path Jesus showed. It is not easy, yes, but there is where, here is where real life and joy are truly found. So let us have bold humility to keep learning to live God's way, not just our own way, our own interpretations. There's so much more to discover on this journey altogether. So in this sacred calling to represent the divine voice, divine heart, what is required of us? A willingness to surrender to divine wisdom. Show boundless love, boundless compassion, and live with perfect love for all people. Let us pray. Loving and gracious Lord, we are fragile. We are so sinful. But Lord, heal us, restore us, our relationships with you and one another so that we can truly love, we can truly see the value in each other because we are created as one community, one body of Jesus. Lord God, let us love more, serve more, and also be truly one body. When we, when we fail, Lord, see us with your compassionate perspective so that we can have the courage to try again and again. In your name we pray. Amen.